thing, I want to make one of those flat plate or rotary press stamps to test which stamp you have, right? So I've got here um, number three something, I'll tell you in a second, 300 something. And then I, I bought some laminated sheets and we're going to cut the corners off of this, well I'm going to laminate it, and then cut the corners off and try and create one of those flat plate or rotary press test stamps that uh, I think I actually talked about last video and uh, so I felt like I wanted to make one. I've always been curious about them and while I can use the measuring gauge uh, maybe it would be easier to just make the stamp like all of those old-fashioned collectors and I think it would be a fun thing to do so I got one of those. Next after that we're going to talk about this postcard I found. It's pretty sweet. Alrighty, so following the instructions from the SwedishTiger.com that I had shown the uh, last video in my flat plate versus rotary press stamp video. Um, you got to get one of these Washington Franklin issues that has the bottom spelt out where it says one cent or two cent if you wanted, um, but instead of numerals, and those ones are flat plate printings. So I know this is a flat plate, so they don't have to question anything about that. And I was trying to find one that has pretty clean borders, that isn't ruined uh, by cancellation as far as visibility goes. I could have gotten a mint one as well, but they were a little bit more expensive, and <clears throat> I was trying to save some money. So uh, this guy actually was pretty cheap. Uh, it ended up being seven cents on hip stamp. Go figure, pretty cheap. But unfortunately, there was still shipping involved. A buck thirty, a little steep if you ask me, for a single stamp, but... So buck thirty-seven, and I've acquired a flat plate stamp that I can use to make this tool with. And after that, I decided, hey, I would love to laminate it. I don't know why uh, that was so stuck in my head. Uh, just kind of the idea of I'm gonna. I just wanted to make it more durable, make it last longer if possible. So I went shopping around. Now I found these on Amazon. Hopefully they don't suck, and hopefully this doesn't ruin things for me. Uh, but they were two sheets for two thirty-seven, right before tax. If you're a Prime member, free shipping, right? Um, so I mean, heck, two thirty-seven, uh, a buck thirty-seven. I mean, this is three six three three dollars and seventy cents. I mean, so under four dollars, something like that, to create this tool um, and laminate it. So let's. See how this goes down. I've never laminated anything in my life, um, but I just wanted to. And you know, if it goes awry, this little experiment, I can always buy another stamp, not a big deal. Luckily, they're cheap, uh, but uh, I hope this works out. So let me open these up and let's uh, try and laminate this thing, cut out the corners, and see if I can make a decent tool. Jeebus, I just had trouble with my coffee maker. Ay, oh, yay. yay. Technical difficulties here. I guess I gotta clean that dang thing. I've been using French roast and it's a really oily bean. Started to make things stick in my machine. Darn it. So, that seemed to go pretty well. I'm sort of questioning if I should have cut the stamp first now. That might have actually been a smarter thing to do. This is all trial, trial and error for me, but uh, basically the instructions were like, trim, cut out what you want, and uh, so luckily I was correct. I kind of had a feeling I needed to cut two squares off. Uh, the stamp fit perfectly in a square. And I figured I'd have to flap it over, overlay it, and I did. And uh, so, overall, this has gone well. Um, so, yeah, you place the stamp on the sticky, so you peel off the uh, white, and you place the stamp on the sticky side, and I just folded it over, boom. So now, um, by referencing the picture here on the website, I'm going to try and mimic... Let me get this off of here for one thing. Okay. 
I'm going to try and mimic exactly like they had on the picture on the website. And uh, so it looks like they cut it off right before the end. They went up to just above the banner. So let's see that. Let's try that. Okay. <laughs> Boy, this is an uncommon practice cutting a stamp, huh? huh? Well, that worked out well. And then they did pretty much cut the zero in half and went into the banner here. And on the top, it looks like they went down, cut off the E, and went down to the wreath. Yeah, right to the wreath. They didn't do uh, perfectly even cuts. It looks like the top cuts are a little bit longer than the <coughs> bottom ones. I don't know if that was on purpose, but maybe. They're pretty close though. Uh, okay, and then they cut the U off and basically went to the wreath. Okay, so I'm, I'm just, not that it's that critical, I just kind of want to do it exactly how they did it, just for fun, if I can help it. Cool. Wow. So, um, that went well. The only disadvantage might be if there's any sticky laminate still sticking off. Haha, -ha. there is just on the very edge of this I'm going to trim that off last thing I want to deal with is stamps sticking the stamps well guys so here's what I ended up with Sorry for the glare. Not bad. Um, I immediately am glad that I laminated it. I mean, clearly it has added protection and it's going to hold itself together better. You know, if you're going to sacrifice a stamp, um, it might be worth it. It's not absolutely perfect, but uh, I think that it should be sufficient to do the... Uh, to perform its purpose. Yeah. So, there's my little pile of leftover stamp and stuff. Sad. Look at all the little snippings. What a bummer. Oh, well, they printed a lot of those. So, <laughs> not the end of the world. And I have made, finally, my own flat plate versus rotary press tool, just like the old fashioned collectors. Very cool. Um, I have to admit, that's a pretty smart thing to do. And uh, just for the heck of it, I definitely want to try it out, so let's, uh, let me grab some stamp, I gotta look around and try and find uh, a stamp that is potentially a flat plate or not, let's see. Alright, I got my coffee maker working. By the way, I just want to mention I've been using coconut cream instead of milk, it has MCT oils, definitely healthy for you, and uh, I like it. It's my new thing, big fan. Okay, so uh, let me... Go search in here, see if I can find some stuff. At 326. Oh wow, we're actually at the point where hey, there's the one I the one I just cut. Double line watermark, huh? Let's see if I can find something that says rotary press here. Rotary press coils. Okay, so let's compare it to a supposed rotary press stamp. Uh, this one actually looks pretty clean. Let's do this one. So let's say, um, I guess I would just choose a point of reference. So like, let me try to line up the bottom left corner. I mean, geez, look at the right side. The borders don't even line up at all. Um, yeah, the top and the right side, they don't line up. So clearly the bottom stamp is a bigger stamp. And uh, yeah, booyah. So there's your, there's your example there. The first attempt to use it, and there's just no doubt about it. Uh, this Franklin is, being a flat plate, definitely less wide. 
and less tall. So it's moving around a little. Yeah, the top doesn't line up or the right side. Well, that worked pretty well. Okay, let me slip that back into my album. Now let me check it against a supposed flat plate. It would be a little embarrassing if I had a flat plate or rotary press stamp wrong in here, but let's see. So these are supposed to be flat plate and these are coils stamps, but this is a Washington. Oh god, I'm about to embarrass myself, aren't I? I'm going to take this tool and go and check all my freaking stamps in this album if I'm wrong. Wow! Oh my god, that is so embarrassing. Whoops! <laughs> Darn! Clearly that isn't a flat plate. Man. I wonder what kind of crack I was smoking the day that I put that thing in there. Look at the lines. Not even close. Not even close. How did I do that? Oh, Lord. This is like going to start a whole thing with me now. Now I'm going to have to go through and check every single one that is a flat or a rotary plate, a rotary press. Um, the fact that I even have one in there that's wrong pisses me off pretty badly. Boy. Wow. Darn. Ah! That sucks. You know, it's almost the same height, but look at the horizontal difference there. Now, I just measured this just for fun real quick. This is 22 tall and 19 wide, so it does fall within flat plate parameters, so that's correct. Now, let me measure this. Give me a sec. Okay, it's 22 and a half tall by 19 and a half wide. So, definitely... Um, Rotary press. What in the world, man? Um, darn it. That's a. That's just a sad thing. I'm a sad panda about that. I was. I didn't want to. Didn't. I was really hoping it wouldn't be that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now, I'm measuring this one right now, and you know, this thing is 22 and a half tall. I misspoke. It's definitely 22 and a half. So that just goes to show, um, you know, just like I was saying last video, that those Lin parameters are not an absolute perfect thing because this, according to the Lin parameters, the flat plates only go to 22 tall, but this is clearly a flat plate printing. We know that for sure. And it is definitely 22 and a half tall. So, um, I think that that just goes to show again why it is just more prudent to um, do the horizontal measurements. Just forget the vertical measurements altogether. Do the horizontal measurements. That's really just the way to go, I think. Yeah. So, anyways. Wow. Um, what a shame. Man. So, uh... My God, here I was saying that this thing had a, was a number 443 and it had a $45 cat value. What? So that means it's some other number, because it's definitely not a flat plate. Actually, that means it's probably this. Number 452. I bet you it is. Well, that's just a sad thing. So, immediately, love this tool. Now, of course, I didn't have to have this tool to check that. I could use my gauge, but, yeah, I, would, I just will never know. I mean, what happened? Why didn't I, how did I misidentify that? Oy, oy, um, I'm, it's just the way it goes sometimes, I guess. <laughs> it's all a best effort, right? Um, and the last thing I want to do is, like, because uh, I want to be genuine, you know, I don't want anything to be misidentified. That's horrible to me. I mean, come on. Uh, here I am, like, you know, trying to say, hey, I got these stamps that, you know, I'm claiming these are these stamps, and they're not. You know, that sucks. I don't like that one bit. So, uh, I'm definitely going to have to check the rest of them just to satiate my curiosity. And, um, you know, with really old issues... There's no question about 
Look at that one's off too. Oh my god. This is so embarrassing. Uh, with older issues, like you know the really early ones at the beginning of the book, um, there was only flat plate, so you don't really have to worry about it. Rotary press came about at some point, and um, wow, what a shame! Another one. Is this one wrong too? Oh my god, we're gonna clear it. This tool immediately uh, shining with me. Immediately shining with me. Mm, that one's. Uh, That's actually pretty good. Horizontally, that's pretty good, but it's not perfectly lined up. Um, and the top is definitely taller. Oh, hold on. Sorry if I'm blocking the camera, guys. This is just some kind of stuff that I uh, want to get a good look at. You know, it actually lines up perfectly uh, width-wise. This one might be the actual uh, correct. Um, but uh, vertically, clearly, it's taller. Uh, and then so, 22 and a half to 23 tall. Check the right, with the gauge. I guess it's maybe worth having both things, a gauge and that stamp. I mean, it's 23 tall. Um, darn. Uh, ew. This, I mean, that's too tall. I think that that's too tall. It's that's a weird. This is weird. <laughs> I mean, 19 wide. Rotary press is supposed to be, according to my measurements, 19 and a half wide. 20 and 22 and a half to 23 tall flat plate up to 19 wide 22 tall but we know they can, they can go taller oh man um, what do you guys think I am a little torn here um, this is kind of a weird scenario for me I mean if it's if it's 19 wide it's a little bit too it's not it's not quite usually wide enough to be a rotary press but 23 tall that just sounds too tall to be a flat plate uh um hmm i am uh not quite sure what to do about that i've got one measurement that falls in one category and another that falls in the other Crap. You know, my uh, my guts are telling me I just think that 23 tall is just too tall. Now, I know that uh, some flat plates can get up to 22 and a half. I've seen that myself. Um, you know, for example, I mean, this is a flat plate, uh, this tool, and it's... I just got to check it again. My mind is boggled right now. The thing is definitely 22 and a half tall, but it's not 23. It's like a clean, crisp 22 and a half tall. Um, God. Ah! <laughs> what to do? What does this say on the back? It actually says 441 on the back, but we all know we can't just trust what somebody wrote. Um, they can make mistakes just like I can or anybody else. Okay, uh, alright. Well, I'm curious what you guys think. I'm uh, definitely perplexed here about what to do with this guy. I'm going to leave it in there for now, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong. And um, this guy, I am quite confident, is actually not a flat plate. So... Darn, that sucks. Uh, but so I'm gonna have to slap this guy with along with this guy over here. Uh, um, okay, well that so that one has to be a 452 uh, because this is a vertical perf, and so it couldn't be any of those. And 
these are two cents, okay, three cents. So yeah, this one must be a 452. Actually, I was gonna mount it, but I guess there's really no reason. I might as well just slip it in there. Piece of cake, booyah. Um, welcome home, a little bit different shade. Clearly this paper isn't quite as yellowed as this one, so it's a little greener looking. Uh, okay, so, and then this one, I guess I'll have to actually go into checking the types. Here we go. Where did I have that? Had it here. Yeah, wow. I gotta go and check and see what type this is. Okay, I'm not gonna have you guys sit with me forever while I think through all this, but... Um, this so far has been very fun. I've probably spent more time on this little tool in this video so far than I ever intended, but absolutely immediately glad that I made it. Um, just went ahead and I identified that I had a stamp misplaced in my album right off of the bat. I love that. Uh, so yeah, this is all interesting to me. It's actually, did not expect this to be such an eye opening thing. And, um, what an interesting conundrum having one measurement that's rotary let's say and one measurement that's flat plate what does one do in that situation i my guts just tell me if it has 23 tall then that's too tall and if i um you know can't be confident that it's a flat plate then i might as well put it consider it a rotary press and um, this is just in the, uh, you know, in efforts to be accurate in my album. If, you know, let's say I had two of these and um, one of them had these oddball measurements like this. And I'm like, what the heck? Uh, and one actually happened to clearly fall within flat plate. Then I, I, you know, I could have the confidence. And so basically if I can't be confident that it's flat plate, I'm not going to call it flat plate, you know? I don't know. I just feel like that's the right thing to do, but what do I do with this? Um, yeah, weird. Okay, so I thought it would be as simple as just slipping it in there, but I went, I was second guessing myself. I went looking further in the album and look at, here's 1916 to 19 rotary press coils. Oh, those are perforated horizontally. Whoops, hold on. Is the next page going to be vertically? Okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, anyways, um, these are unwatermarked perf 10 vertical, okay, and I was about to put it in a perf 10 vertical, I don't even know if these are watermarked or not, but these are 14 to 16s, um, and they don't really say anything about the watermark, but this is reigniting in my brain, well, this is series 19, 14 to 15, single line watermark okay um does that mean that these are single line as well oh my goodness this is the this is uh, it reignites in my head the oh god the slippery slope that is washington franklin stamps so i'm gonna have to go and use my washington franklin identifier and i think what i'm gonna do is before i actually just go ahead and slip this into the next page and say well it must be this one that wouldn't be me doing my due diligence. I need to use my... I need to identify these. I need, I need to just start from scratch. I, I kind of want to do that. Just start from scratch again um, with these. And uh, um, I'm, I'm going to use the Stamp Smarter Washington Franklin identifier tool and just start from nothing and identify these. So yay! A little something to do there. Not a big deal. But, uh, yeah, having gone further and been like, ah, oh, crap, of course. Um, now, of course, it's a real easy way to check. I mean, if it has a single line watermark, then there you go. Somebody actually wrote 443 on the back of this. Interesting, but they were wrong, monkeys. Man, this thing is looking poopy on the back. You guys see all that hinged paper remnants, all that garbage, and they wrote on it. Ugh. Uh, bummer. This thing could be a whole lot better. But anyways, I'm going to start from scratch with those. Um, yeah, my guts were like, dude, go look further in the album and make sure that, you know, there's not some other variations that could be just a little birdie in my head was like, wait a minute, it's not that easy. Is anything ever that easy in stamps? No. Uh, so, 
cool. That answers that. That was uh, very illuminating for me and absolutely opened an entire freaking can of worms. You guys wouldn't know that for me, but yeah, I just I, now I'm going to have to go and check. Oh my god, I'm going to have to check all of them. <sighs> okay. Alrighty, so this postcard here. Uh, the other day I was listing a bunch of postcards on Hit Postcard and um, I found this guy. Now this one has this interesting signature on the front and the bottom left says sincerely Frank Yankovic. Um, it looks it looked kind of like a legitimate signature to me and I thought huh um, I wonder who that is he's actually one of these guys on here I don't know if you can pick him out I'm pretty sure it's him and um, so this thing says Hello friends, just a reminder that the boys and I are currently at the Aragon Ballroom, Lick Pierre, Pier, sorry, Ocean Park, Lick Pier, Ocean Park. <clears throat> it's polka night every Wednesday. Please bring card and your date. I will admit you at half price. Sincerely, Frank Yankovic. And it has a postmark from Los Angeles, California, 1950, June 19th. Um sent to uh, somebody in California so anyways I thought that that was interesting I thought wow so I have a signature here from Frank Yankovic who's stating well, that's actually a nice pre-printed card here stating that uh, he can let them in half price and so I of course had to google him well it turns out um, <clears throat> Frank Yankovic is a Grammy winner he was called America's Polka King he was an accordion player, so that's why I can't remember which one he is. But um, he's famous. I thought, wow, how about that? I actually have a signed Frank Yankovic postcard that he sent to somebody. And, um, you know, these are the cool little tiny gems. Not that this thing is particularly valuable. I went around Googling it, and uh, he's done this a lot. Um, there are postcards listed that have this it's very similar it looks exactly the same sincerely Frank Yankovic signature and they weren't like you know selling for a million dollars or anything like that um, a little bit more than the average postcard perhaps but uh, nothing crazy and so um, anyways I went to YouTube to uh, see if I could watch him play and just kind of learn a little bit more and witness what he was all about so he did this song of this song about um, a woman being too fat or something and I thought it was actually really funny I'm gonna share a clip of that right now up the hill no 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 can she dance a quadrille no 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 does she fit in my coop by herself she's a group could she possibly sit upon my knee no my god <laughs> that was funny um <clears throat> did not expect that song when i went to look him up but i've definitely heard that i don't want her you can have her she's too fat for me phrase uh i don't know if that was like the original song that that came from but it's really funny in my opinion <clears throat> to watch that guy sing that stuff and have that smile on his face <laughs> So, anyways, I thought this was a pretty cool postcard, and uh, I'm going to keep it for my own personal collection. Um, I'm not sure if, if I have anything else that is from a Grammy winner, so it's pretty cool. And um, I thought that was a neat little bit of history on that guy. So, that was it for this episode of uh, things I uh, planned on doing more but uh the thing is i actually have other stuff that i need to get into today i just got groceries and all this other stuff so hope you guys enjoyed making that tool with me and uh man what a shame that i opened that huge can of worms now i gotta go check every single thing that i say is flat plate in that whole freaking album oh my god but i'm glad that i did that this has been uh, a healthy good thing and uh, i'm quite 
happy with that tool. I'm glad that the lamination went well. That was simple and easy. Uh, it was everything went as well as I hoped it would have gone. So I'm very pleased. And uh, yeah, maybe I think next time I'm going to just put it out there. I think I'm going to do a Kyle's Cabinets episode as my plan. I think it's been a little while at this point. So we're due for one of those. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys as always. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. By the way, it, it helps me and supports this channel. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I will see you later on. Take care. Bye.